Hey everybody, uh, this lesson is finding complex solutions of polynomial equations. Complex, complex uh, solutions just has uh, i's in their imaginary numbers, okay? Like uh, 5 plus 2 i's, call it a complex number, okay? So when the 2i part is the imaginary, the, and uh, so when you put them together, 5 plus 2i, that's a, that's a complex uh, number right there. All right, so our question here is, um, what's the fundamental theorem of algebra and its corollary tell us? Uh, P of X equals zero, where P has degree uh, N, and you're thinking, what is that? Well, it'll it'll unravel here, you guys. So, so uh, finding complex solutions. So here's a, a third degree equation because it's degree three right there. Okay, so degree three. Now, if we factored that, you guys, it would factor to X plus two times X plus three squared. And how we'd factor that from before, from the last lesson, we'd do synthetic division. And we'd do all the factors of 18, which is 1, 2, 3, what's that, 6, and then 9 and 18. Um, and we'd find that negative 2 would work. And so we'd synthetically divide this uh, negative 2 in there, and we'd get a condensed quadratic equation that factors to this right here. Anyways, that's not the, the main part of this lesson. So it, when it does factor to that, then we set those factors equal to zero. And so we here we go minus 2, minus 2, minus 3, minus 3. Now notice x plus 3 happens twice. So this textbook likes, likes to call it a multiplicity. means it's a multiple root, okay, of zero. Okay, or a multiple zero because it happens twice right there. And, and this textbook likes to say it's it's a multiplicity comma two or multiplicity two. Okay, in my in my old textbooks, uh, we've always called them double roots. Okay, and we'll talk about roots. Roots are zeros, are solutions. They're the same as x-intercepts. So, so lots of uh, terminology. And I know the TI calculators, and I think the Casio uh, graphing calculators also calls them roots in the calculators. Okay. I think, you guys. So find all zeros of P of X, including any multiplicities greater than 1. Okay, so uh, so that just means you have a double root or a triple root or, you know, four, uh, four roots of the same. Anyway, so, so here, P of X is already factored. So we're going to set that factor equal to 0. We'll go plus 5, plus 5. And then set this factor equal to 0. We go minus 2, minus 2. And notice uh, X equals negative 2 is called a multiplicity of, in this case, three, because it happens three times right there. So it's a multiplicity three. Okay, so that's how they would like you to recognize that. And my old book, we would have called them triple roots, or TR for triple roots. Okay, same thing. All right, so uh, here's number two. So here we're going to factor. So pull out a x squared. So, so now we set those factors equal to zero. So x squared equals zero, or x plus uh, seven equals zero. So this one's already solved. We just get a double root right here, or book wants to call it multiplicity 2. Okay, whatever. And then uh, x equals negative 7 when we go minus 7, minus 7. Okay, well, those are easy. Well, what about this one? Here we have to factor that rascal. So remember, that is a difference of cubes. And a difference of cubes or sum of cubes, if they're cubes and there's two terms, 1, 2, then it always goes a binomial times a trinomial. Okay, and then what we do is we SOAP it. SOAP it stands for the same sign as that. This is the opposite sign of that. And this one's always positive or always plus right here. Okay, and then the binomial are these things that are being cubed right there, okay? So then the trinomial, the bookends, you guys, we square the bookends of the binomial. So square this is right here. Square this, it goes right here. And then the middle part of the trinomial is the product of the things in the binomial, okay? So x times 4 is 4x. All right, so now what we're going to do is um, uh, set these factors equal to 0. Okay, now this one's always going to give us complex numbers. Whenever you have a sum or difference of cubes, the trinomial always gives us imaginary numbers or complex numbers, and we'll sh I'll show you. Okay, so it never factors, you guys. This never factors. Okay, so we got to use the quadratic formula with that. Actually, we could have used a completing the square. I'm going to do that in class with this one because that's a one and that's an even number. Completing the square is easier to me. So anyway, so uh, x minus 4 equals 0. We go plus 4 plus 4. Okay, and then here we got to use the quadratic formula or I'm going to show completing the square in class. So anyway, so we're going to get... Um, 
some imaginary numbers on that. So here's the quadratic formula, and we get uh, we get a negative 48 inside. So an imaginary number comes out, and so we're going to put an i out here, and it's going to be root positive 48. Okay, and there's a couple ways to uh, squ uh, simplify square roots. You can uh, multiply. You can think of that as 16 times 3. Uh, but I always tell students to do factor trees of 48 and get the prime factorization of 48. There it is right there. Okay, and then uh, two twos on the inside will bring one two out. Same with these two, so it'll bring another two out. So we multiply all of those with the I that's outside waiting. And so there we get that. And since two goes into that and that, we have to divide it. So two goes into that. So there's our, our complex uh, roots right here. So or non-real roots or imaginary roots. So your book wants to call them complex roots or non-real roots. So anyways, we get x equals 4 and then negative 2. And I think your book writes it as two separate pieces as negative 2 plus 2i root 3 and then, whoops, and then negative 2 minus 2i root 3. Okay. All right. So, uh, okay, let's try this one here. Okay. So here, always, if you can factor, do that first, pull an X out, and then if you can, factor by grouping. If you can't, then what I would do is uh, is a factor um, uh, to the rational roots theorem. But I think I can factor this by, by grouping right here. Okay, so when we group those two, and when we group those two, since that's a minus, it's going to change this sign inside to a plus right here, this guy right here. Okay, because as soon as you put parentheses around it, imagine if I distributed this negative back through. I'd get negative 4x right here and then minus 12 right here. So as soon as you wrap parentheses, um, you change that sign if that's a minus right there. All right, so out of these two guys, we can pull an x squared. Out of these two guys, we can pull a 4, and we're left with, in both cases, x plus 3. Hey, nice and convenient. So let's pull the x plus 3's out, and we're left with uh, uh, the stuff that's attached with the, the x plus 3 here is x squared, and then uh, the one that's attached here is with minus 4. This factor some more. x squared minus 4 is x plus 2, x minus 2. Now we set all those factors equal to 0. Okay, so here we get x equals 0 is a 0. x equals negative 3, negative 2, and positive 2. So I don't care if you write it as plus or minus 2, but I noticed your book writes it as negative 2 and then comma positive 2. Okay, all right, so the fundamental theorem of algebra just says um, uh, if whatever the degree is, that's how many roots you have. Let's go back real quick, okay? This was degree four, and it gave us four roots, one, two, and then three and four, okay? And then this one here, uh, where was it? This guy here was degree three. We got three roots, okay? My three roots were... Uh, the one real root and then the two imaginary or complex roots, okay? So the fundamental theorem of uh, algebra just says that, um, whoops, too fast, that uh, whatever the degree is, that's how many roots there are. Some of them might be complex, some of them, uh, they might all be real, they might not be. So solve the polynomial equation by finding uh, all roots, okay? So here we go. So uh, this is a third degree polynomial, so we're going to get three roots. Again, some might be imaginary. All of them might be imaginary. Um, uh, but typically, we usually get one real root. Okay, so um, uh, look at this. Uh, even, 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 even. This is both even and odd. So we can divide both sides by two and make numbers smaller. I'd rather deal with this blue guy than, than this uh, starting one right here because they're all even numbers right there. All right, so I'm thinking, can it factor by grouping? If it can't, I would use synthetic division to use the rational roots theorem right there, okay? So if it can, now it can because 17 times 6 is 102. And look at that, there's a 6 right there. Just remember, when you group these two guys, it changes that sign right there. So I can pull a x squared out of these guys. I can pull a 17 out of these guys. We get that. Pull the x minus 6 out, we get that, and then now we set those factors equal to 0, okay? So here I'm going to go plus 6, plus 6. Um, uh, here I'm going to go plus 17, plus 17, so we get to that. So here's one root right here, x equals 6. Okay, remember, x squared, there's two of them here because it's a squared, okay? And the two are plus or minus. 
plus or minus the square root of 17, okay? So our three roots right here are negative root 17, positive root 17. You can write plus or minus root 17, and then 6, okay? All right, so notice it has uh, it started off with degree 3, and there's three solutions. Okay, this is a great stopping point, and that's going to be your assignment. Take care.